Alright, hello everybody, and welcome back to our Python, uh, Raspberry Pi, and Robotics tutorial video series. In this video, we're going to start wiring up this motor and uh, get it going. So the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is actually wire up our motor here. So as you can see, I've already attached uh, the wheel to this. Um, anyway, the leads are right on the edges here, though, so here and here. And so the first thing that we want to go ahead and do is go ahead and actually wire up uh, these leads. So, uh, what you'll want is two wires. Um, these are the wires here. Uh, I've already stripped off the ends of the wire. Uh, so then what we'll go ahead and do is uh, put our black on top. I'm just going to thread it through. And hold on, so it helps if you kind of twist it up a little bit. Uh, here you would solder, I suppose, if you wanted. Um, again, I just don't really see the point of soldering it when it's highly likely uh, that you will just take this apart and then do the same thing uh, connect your red lead so I'm just going to take some electrical tape put it on here and then just wrap it around so again the better way to do it would be indeed to solder it but I'm not going to do that for now so that's that. Uh, the next thing that we're going to want to do now is we can actually um, we could hook this up to our H bridge, so we might as well go ahead and do that. So we'll come over here, and this is our H bridge. So now you're going to want to get a small screwdriver of some sort, and uh, either a flathead or a Phillips head, depending on what kind of screws are in there for you. And you can see that there's like little screw holes right here and here. You unscrew that, and it's almost like a clip on the inside. So when you unscrew it, you stick the wire in, then you screw it, screw it down, and it kind of holds the wire in place for you. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and loosen them. Okay. So now that that's done, uh, we can stick the motor leads into there. Um, so I'm going to put, again... Over output one, I'm going to put my black uh, black wire. Okay, once you've got that one in, go ahead and put your other one in. And when you're done with both, go ahead and give them a good tug. Make sure that they are indeed secure in there. The next thing that we want to do is let's go ahead and plug in our power supply. So uh, let me move this kind of out of the way a little bit. I guess we'll leave this here and just leave the motor over here. Um, so on the power supply, your power supply is going to be plugged in uh, to your H bridge, only it's going to be plugged in here where it says VCC, then you've got GND, which is ground, and then 5 volts. Well, 5 volts is for the power that you get from your Pi, so your Pi sends a signal through the 5 volts, which will send the signal to the battery pack to turn on these motors, and that's how it works. VCC, uh, you might also have something there that says like 12 volts or 12V. Uh, VCC just stands for voltage at common connector. So unscrew over VCC and wire, you might as well just unscrew ground and 5 volts just to get them all done. And uh, get the red into VCC. And you can go ahead and screw that one in. Now, ground, uh, we're actually going to use the Pi's grounding as well. So that's not, this won't be the only uh, cord that goes into ground. So we're actually going to plug in our Pi's ground as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So I um, guess I'll move the battery pack over here for now. Put the Pi here. And now what you're going to want to have is a cord. I'm going to use a black one. This is going to be a male to female. Um, but you could also just use any old wire, really. Um, but male to female will be the best one to use. So what you're going to want to do is plug your the female end into your Raspberry Pi. And anytime you're looking at a Raspberry Pi diagram of the GPIO pins, uh, you're looking at it basically uh, like this. Okay. So this is right here, pin one. If it would get focused. So it's kind of important that you get the right pins. Uh, hopefully it'll focus. There we go. So this one right here is pin 1 when you're looking at it. So like the top left is pin 1. And then you've got pin 2 and 3 and so on. 
So, uh, what you're going to want to do is plug the ground into pin 6, which is the third down from the top right, or this one right here. Okay. So that's the ground for the pie. So we're going to take ground and we're going to plug that in. And apparently my VCC came out. So from here, uh, we'll plug in the power to VCC or 12V, depending on what you have. Now you're going to take the ground uh, for your Pi, and then the, also the grounding for uh, the battery pack. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just uh, spin this one around, or twirl it kind of around um, the Pi's ground. Basically, so they're stuck together. So then we'll take that and put it into the ground. Now what we want to go ahead and do is uh, set up the input and outputs. And then also we need to wire up the 5 volt signal here. So the next thing that we want to do is let's go ahead and wire up our, um, our 5 volt cable. So that's going to be, I'm going to use this green one, another male to female. Uh, and you want to plug in to the Pi's second pin so looking at your pi that is going to be apparently we can't fit our pi under here there we go that is going to be literally this one like the top uh, top right pin so plug into that one and from there we plug that into the 5 volt uh, spot on our H bridge now what we want to go ahead and do is get the GPIO pins all set up because we've got everything else that we want now. Um, for the GPIO pins, I actually have uh, the strip. If you bought the kit, the same kit that I got, uh, you should have this strip and it's just a strip of female to female uh, jumper wires. But if you don't have that, you can either use converters or do what I said before about splicing or have just four female to female jumper wires. And it will just be somewhat useful if you plug them into the exact same spots that I plug them in, but you don't have to. It's just that your code will have to be a little slight, like slightly different than my code. So it would just be helpful if you plug them all into the same spots that I plug uh, mine into. So uh, with that, where you're gonna plug these in is gonna be here on your H bridge. You've got uh, inputs. Uh, hopefully I can get it to zoom. Yeah, there we go. So you've got input one down here, two, three and four and then you can see on top you've got ENA and five volts and then five volts and ENB and that's for enable A and enable B uh, you shouldn't have to even touch those uh, I've seen some tutorials where people do stuff with those if you wanted to add more motors I'm pretty sure that's when you would start wanting to use those but for now uh, we're going to control four motors two in succession so if you want to control four completely separate motors uh, then I think you'd want to start tapping into those but for now we're not even going to touch those. So instead, what we're going to do is just plug your, your male to, or your female to females in each of these four. There's four spots there. Like I said, I've got a strip. If you have a strip, um, then you can use the strip as well. So anyway, I'm going to plug starting from input one to input four, white, gray, purple, blue, um, just for your notes. So if you're looking and trying to figure out how I plugged mine in. Okay, once you've got those plugged in on that end, now you're going to want to plug them into the GPIO pins on your Raspberry Pi. So for me, input 1, which is my white cable, I plug into pin 15 or GPIO 22 on the Raspberry Pi. And so bringing over our Pi, it's going to be hard to show both of these at the same time, but I'll do my best. Uh, pin 15 on your Pi is going to be, I guess, 8 down from the top left. Input 2 is going to go into pin 13, which is right above that. So I'm going to take my gray and plug that in right above it. And then from there, uh, input 3 is going to go into pin 11, which is one right on top of um, 13. And then our input 4 is going to go into GPIO 4, which is actually uh, 2 above the last one that we plugged in. So 
So when you're all done, if you were using the exact same colors I was using, um, that is what it should look like. Hopefully we can get it to uh, focus in pretty good. All right, so again, input one goes into pin 15, which is eight down from the top or six up from the bottom, depending on which way you go. Input uh, two is in pin 13, which is GPIO 21, and pin 15 is GPIO 22. Uh, then input three is in pin 11. So basically those three are right together with each other, right? And then you skip one, and then input four is going into pin seven or GPIO four. So when you're all done, um, that should be everything wired up. So the next thing that we want to do is actually turn on our Raspberry Pi. Now that you've got everything hooked up, the next thing that we want to do is come into our Raspberry Pi, and now we want to actually program our first script. Now, as I said in the previous tutorial video, you are going to need rpi.gpio. So if you haven't already done it, do sudo apt get install python dash capital R, capital P, lowercase i, dot, all caps, GPIO, uh, hit enter, and make sure that you have the most recent version. Otherwise, uh, you're going to run into some trouble. I already have it, so we're good. Now, the next thing that we want to do is let's go ahead and create a directory called robotics. So make dir robotics. Hit enter. CD into robotics. Now let's go ahead and make our first robot script. So let's go ahead and do sudo nano robot1.py. Now what we want to do is import capital R, capital P, lowercase i dot all caps GPIO as lowercase GPIO. And then finally import time. So GPIO here, uh, this is so we can control our pins. And time is so we can specify the time length that we want to control the pins. Now the next thing we want to do is gpio.setmode gpio.allcaps board. Now we want to specify the pins that we want to be using. So uh, we're going to specify pins 7, 11, 13, and 15 as GPIO output pins. So gpio.setup 7 as gpio.out. And now we're going to do the same thing for 11, 13, and 15. So gpio.setup 11, gpio.out, gpio.setup uh, 13, gpio.out, and gpio.setup 15, gpio.out. Okay? And now we actually want to program um, something, right? We want to use the pins to do something. So as I said with the H bridge, uh, depending on the type of signal that you send, not only can we make the motor go, but we can choose the direction of that motor. So first, let's just do a simple um, action to make the motor go. And for me, each motor is going to, um, at least in my frame, they end up facing each other. So we do have to kind of change some things about, depending on you know, what, how you set up your frame, uh, will vary. If you're going to use the same frame as me, then just use the same code, and you can just use the exact same code I type here. Anyways, it, it will make your motor go. So anyway, GPIO dot output um, seven true. GPIO dot output eleven true. GPIO dot output thirteen true, and GPIO dot output fifteen false and we want this to happen for uh, half of a second 0 0.5 now when we're all done what we're going to want to do is do gpio.cleanup and what this is going to do is stop all of the signals coming to our pins because if you don't do gpio cleanup what's going to happen is even though you you know you did assign sleep and then it moves on uh, it's just going to continue going that's how sleep even works at all right it's because this is all activated, we sleep for this long, and then we clean it up. So uh, that's what we're going to do. So now uh, we can control X, save, yes, enter, good. Now sudo python robot1.py. Now don't hit enter just yet. Make sure your motor isn't going to like run over something. Um, and when you hit enter, it should run uh, for half of a second. Sure enough, mine ran for half of a second. Uh, and that's it. 
So hopefully you guys got your motors uh, working there. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. Until the next video, which will be uh, hooking up the rest of our motors and also uh, plugging them into a frame. Um, we'll probably do that, and then we'll set up the rest of the motors. So anyway, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.